this is an introduction of sorts to uh, how how I have found uh, inner peace and wisdom. I can't say I fully have found it because I, I mean, until you we transcend um, past the physical vibrations, it's really hard to have true peace. But um, basically, I'm gonna just tell you a little bit of the insights that I have came to a know uh, understanding and what brings me into a knowing of wholeness, I guess you could say. Now, I can't tell you where these thoughts came from. These thoughts are just thoughts. Uh, basically, I just started uh, accompanying, accompanying everything that I was about one to two years ago, and these thoughts just came into my reality. First off, let's talk about time and space and dimensions. And dimensions is just meaning an uh, alternate layer of reality. So let's talk about that. Um, first off, every millisecond that we live is another alternate, re alternate reality, alternate dimension. And so therefore every decision, every action, everything could always have turned out different. Always, it always is turned out different. It always is happening. Modern quantum physics and molecular biology, neuroimmunology, they both say that we do create our own realities and that we have a lot of responsibility over the world in which we live, at least the way we experience the world and the way the world behaves towards us. That's a very good connection, actually. That was brilliant. Okay, and that's what you gotta um, try to fathom is that think about all the moments in your life and all the different timelines that your life could have been but it's not, it's what you consciously hold into this one moment, and that is your life. And that's, that's what our subconscious is a huge part of our mind, and it's uh, uh, to what we know of our mind, anyways. So basically, what I'm saying, I mean, I talked to the guy, talked with the guy about subconscious mind, and but there's also reflexive mind, basically, and that's, you know, all you body functions, your heart functioning, and different things like that. But that's all within your conscious mind, everything that controls your body. Your subconscious mind is a whole separate part away from that. So, basically, so now we have your subconscious mind choosing the reality that it knows that you need to help your growth process in the evolutionary spiral of becoming a creation source. Um, basically, uh, ultimately, what we'd like to see is, what is the physics of consciousness? We can ask that question today. What is consciousness? Where does it come from? What are the origins of consciousness? What are the limits of human potential? We're in a position to actually answer that now, I believe, although there's certainly not consensus yet in the scientific community about that, but with the real cutting-edge knowledge. Simultaneously, um, in, e in every moment, and so therefore you were a billionaire in another moment, you were a, a, a savage in the next in, in another moment. You were uh, a person that is very similar to who you are now, but you're just experiencing a little bit different scenario. Maybe your sister died, or your mother died, or, or you know, you had a kid, or you didn't have a kid, or you know, all the multiple facets of time and space is all a com company into this one moment and so then that's what we're getting into. The discovery of the unified field, the so-called superstring field, we now understand that life is fundamentally one. At the basis of all life's diversity, there is unity. At our basis, you and I are one. And that unity at the basis of mind and matter is consciousness, universal consciousness. So with that deep understanding that consciousness isn't created by the brain, it's not purely an outcome of molecular chemical processes in the brain, but is fundamental in nature. It's the very core of nature. We call it the unified field. Now that we have that foundational understanding of what consciousness is, we can solve the mind-body problem. We can see how consciousness percolates up through our physiology to become the consciousness that we experience and see and sensory perception and all of that. So there is a foundation now to really link rigorously
neuroscience with quantum physics, that might be really a next step in the development of the movie. You've asked the questions in the first movie. Now we're just on the verge of being able to answer those questions. There's only one creation source, and how can there not be? Because all creation comes from something, so there has to be, you know, one Anyway, it's, it's, not, it's not one, it's actually you and me and everything that is within this universe. And energy is a part of this universe, but it's not God. God is, cannot even conceive it with the conscious ability that we have at this moment. So why even try? Or why even label it? And um, it's just a label. <laughs> and it's a label for something we can't fathom. But then with, you know, holy scriptures and ancient teachings and ancient writings, we think we can fathom it because of these, um, what people have understood for what it to be from an earlier time, even though that's not this time. Everything is one moment and just a conscious way to help you grow and help you evolve. And that anything and everything is possible. It just whether what you choose to feel or what you choose to consciously see at that moment. And um, and that's a big deal. Beliefs play a big part in the into this because beliefs actually mold your consciousness into what you see. Okay, but it's not what you are. Beliefs are just some, a physical constraint on this physical realm. And so that's really, that's what beliefs are. They're just, it's like um, tying your hands behind your back, basically. You're tying all your senses up into a bundle of, of, a, of an energetic bundle, a bubble, basically. And so beliefs just basically keep your thoughts, keep your energy inside this bubble and that you can't expand outside that bubble. And so that's why all the ancient gurus, all the ancient, and all the people have been saying that you gotta let go of your beliefs, you gotta change your beliefs, you gotta um, understand a whole different world before you can ever do anything else besides what we think we know, and that's anything dealing with five senses, and, and anything dealing with gravity and the world, and everything that the world consists of. So, this, that's the introduction. Uh, I hope you enjoy my videos. I hope uh, they can they help you find the peace. If they don't, then uh, all truth is your truth. All truth is my truth. So, it's you have to find your own truth to you know find your own peace. So, and my truth might not be your truth. So, um, understand that and uh, and follow your heart to the next truth. Now that simple techniques, universal, non-sectarian, scientifically verified techniques exist to gain enlightenment. If saving technologies to develop consciousness are reintroduced into education. You said non-sectarian. Does that mean like non-religious? Is that what that mean by that? Um, the, the, the experience of pure consciousness really transcends any one religion or any one philosophy. It's as scientific as it is religious. It is, after all, a state of functioning of the brain, maximally expanded comprehension. It's the direct subjective experience of the scientifically discovered unified field of all the laws of nature. Is that religious? Perhaps, but it's scientific too. So there's no reason that it should be disbarred from education. Otherwise, we're going to get the same old result. 5% development of our mental potential, another generation of war and terrorism and human cruelty. And that'll go on forever until the experience of life's essential unity is bestowed and the brain is properly.